something there. All right, here we have a Ream five ton system that we think has a refrigerant leak. Um, it's not cooling that well anymore and the evaporator coil freezes up about three quarters of the way up. So um, the owner has been running it pretty lightly. We're gonna gas it up and see if we can trace down where the leak is. This is a R410 system, or 410A. So we're gonna hook up the gauges, purge, the, purge them out obviously, hook up the 410 bottle. And um, we're gonna check uh, superheat, subcooling, and just see where things are at, make sure we are actually dealing with a refrigerant leak. So the first step is just to remove the service, service port valves, uh, service port caps here, here, and then you can take the caps off the service valves here and here, and you just hook up your gauge set. But you wanna make sure you purge the gauges with fresh refrigerant too. You don't wanna introduce any air or moisture into the system, so. Of course, I brought a wrench that was too small to take off the, the uh, suction line side, so I'm gonna go back and get one. All right, so we got the, the hoses hooked up. We got the low side hooked up to the suction line. We got the high side hooked up to the liquid line. We figured out what size uh, Allen keys uh, the valve caps, or I guess the, the, the valve stems are. We got our R410 bottle uh, of gas upside down. Uh, gauges are hooked up, pressures are about equalized. And obviously before I did this, I, equal, I, I vented out the gauges by turning on the bottle and just cracking open these valves a bit to let some refrigerant through there so we don't have any air or moisture in the lines because we don't introduce anything new into the system. So um, next step is we will, um, we'll, we'll turn the system on and we'll see what we got. All right, we got the unit running. And we got the gauges on. We're gonna let it run for about 10 minutes. We're about 70, almost 78 degrees on the liquid line. We'll let that run for a while. Let's see how high it gets. And just for reference, this is some of the icing that we were seeing. You can see how half the coil has, is, has nothing on there and the other half is turning white from ice. Now I did the math. This unit only had about maybe two or three degrees of subcooling. We want maybe uh, 10 or 12. And you can, cap you can calculate that by looking at the temperature in the liquid line, which is now about 79, and looking at the, the reading on the, the high side gauge. I just hooked it up, so it's gonna take a minute to adjust. So with this uh, unit here, this prevents liquid refrigerant from going into the, the compressor and slogging it. So all you do is just crack this valve a little bit, add refrigerant, and close it off, let it bleed back down. It's kind of an iterative process doing that over and over again. This unit will probably take quite a bit of refrigerant. And you'll see condensation forming on here because this is getting pretty cold. All right, we've been at this for a while now. I'm charging it slowly because I don't do this every day. Um, we got about, I want to say maybe eight or nine degrees of subcooling right now. So you see the temperature there, 79.8, it's been going down a little bit. You can see the high side gauge, it's really difficult to read, but we're pretty close. In eight or nine degrees of subcooling. I'm gonna try to get it to about 12. But the ice is gone on the coil. Go take a look at that. Ice is all melted, so we're, we're Getting to where we need to be. We're just kind of sneaking up on it. Don't want to overdo it. I'm sure all you AC guys are laughing at me. You have all the fancy equipment to do this in five minutes, but I'm a newbie. Still got to find the leak in this thing though. While we were gassing the unit up, uh, we noticed that the condenser coil was pretty dirty. Couldn't see light through it. And uh, so we decided to take the, the fan shroud off the top and we're just hosing it out with a garden hose from the inside out because air flows from the outside in, we want to flush it in the reverse direction. So we're just slowly hosing it off and you can see how dirty the water is at the bottom. We're estimating the, the coil has probably never been cleaned in the seven years it's been around in this manner. It's been cleaned from the outside in, but not the inside out like this. It's pretty important to, to only charge the system once the the coils are clean. You don't want to do that while uh, the coils are dirty because you can get uh, erroneous readings. For example, it may artificially inflate this, that uh, liquid line temperature because this is all, that liquid line or the contents of it are cooled by this coil. 
And to take this off, it's a little bit different in every unit, but this one's pretty simple. It's just a couple of screws around the perimeter. It just pops right off. So if you want to see if you have an air conditioning refrigerant leak, they make these uh, cool little testers. This one's about 25 bucks on Amazon. You just turn it off. And you get near where you think the leak is. And it'll just start beeping, hopefully. Apparently not right now, I was doing it a minute ago. You get what you pay for. Now the damn thing's calling me a liar. See what else? Hang on. That's annoying. Could be. 25 bucks, right? Yeah. Alright, well I swear in my daughter's life I was getting hits in this thing. It'll start beeping really fast right here. Uh, the whole bottom of the coil lit up pretty good. It started beeping like a Geiger counter. I don't know why it's not doing it now. Blowing in the tip helped last time. No, even when I turned it off it still did the same thing. So, again, uh, I don't know why it's not doing it now, but we, we scanned this whole coil with this tool and it lit up like a Christmas tree down here. So you can buy these little tools and hopefully yours will be more reliable than mine. All right, so we got the unit put back together after cleaning the coils. We're gonna boot it back up, let it run for a couple minutes and check the charges again. Hopefully the subcooling uh, differential will be a little bit more. Um, trying to get maybe around tw 10 or 12. We were about 10 last time. But again, those coils were dirty, so. All right, so we got about 79 point 79 degrees on the uh, liquid line and we're about 92 or so on the head side so we got you know it's oscillating but we got 12 13 14 degrees of subcooling so we're pretty good um, we're gonna see how long the unit holds the charge for hopefully uh, longer than a couple of days but now, all right, so when you disconnect your lines, you want to make sure you take them off as fast as possible so you don't get refrigerant that bleeds out, because that'll affect the charge, obviously. Every time you tap into there, a little bit of refrigerant's gonna leak out. And you always want to store your lines on the back of the manifold here, on these little uh, dummy caps. That prevents debris and air and other sorts of crap from getting in there. Uh, but I think this job is done. Fell in there. That was weird. Um, A leaf. Ugh, sound like someone's had the family. Yeah. Well, coils are clean. Unit's running pretty well. It's ice cold inside, so I think this job is done. If anybody has any questions, just uh, ask in the comments or, or message me. Oh, and in case anybody cares, this is a five-ton ream. It's a model number 14 AJM 60A01. This is a 2012 unit with a copper evaporator coil and the condensing unit, I'm sorry, and the air handler is a model number RHLLHM6024JA, also from 2012. So I hope you enjoyed the video and you learned something.